rights of surety what are the different rights that a surety gives out of contract of indemnity let's try to understand so any surety has three kinds of rights one is against the creditor the other one being against the principal debtor and if in case there are co-sureties that means there are more than one person giving surety or the other term for surety we have is guarantor so if there are more than one guarantor then the guarantor or the surety will have rights against the other surety as well so what are these rights let's try to understand the primary right of any surety is against the creditor why the creditor because creditor is the one who is supposed to receive the money from surety or the guarantor surety has given surety to whom to creditor that is why the primary uh, right against surety we are talking about uh, the primary right of surety against creditor we are talking about so what is it number one right to benefit of creditor securities what does it mean it means that whatever security has been given to creditor all that will go to the surety once surety has released the payment to creditor so the surety is entitled to all the securities which the creditor was holding at the time of contract of guarantee the surety can claim the securities from the creditor on the discharge of full liability of the principal debtor which has been guaranteed by the surety the surety however is not entitled to the benefit of the uh, on benefit of any security subsequently given so after the guarantee it's not but whatever was given for the guarantee everything is transferable to surety once the final payment is made that is important to understand for us right next right of subrogation what does it mean let's first read it out where a guaranteed debt has become due on default default of the principal debtor to perform a guaranteed duty has taken place the surety upon payment or performance of all that he is liable for is invested with all the rights which the creditor has against the principal debtor so similar to what is the relationship between principal debtor and creditor the same relationship goes for the again the surety as well like the same right that a principal debtor has everything is given to surety also because surety is performing on the behalf of principal debtor that is what we mean by uh, right of subrogation such a right of surety which the law vest in him is known as right of subrogation simple next right to file cutimate action now what does it mean it is again very simple just read it out you will understand the surety has a right at any time after guaranteed debt has become due and before he is called upon to pay to require the creditor to sue for and recover the guaranteed debt simple this is called the right to cutimate action however he must undertake to indemnify the creditor for the risk delay expenses which he may by so doing now what does it mean it means that see just have a look in the second line uh, guaranteed due and before he is called upon to pay to require the creditor to sue for and recover the guaranteed debt right so every right is given to him that he can of course before it has become due and uh, if he is uh, before he is asked to pay he can always recover the guaranteed debt whatever is being given right next right in case of fidelity guarantee in the case of fidelity guarantee like guarantee of conduct honesty etc of the principal debtor right understand what are we talking about we are talking about fidelity guarantee so the surety can call upon the creditors or the employed to dismiss the employee whose honesty he has guaranteed in the event of proved dishonesty of the servant and thus further loss can be avoided so if i'm giving you guarantee for somebody being honest and later on i found i find out that this person is not honest i can always give a notice and get out of this fidelity guarantee right simple right to set off the surety is also entitled to the benefit of any set off or counter claim which the primary debtor might possess against the creditor in respect of the same transaction simple the surety will always set off now next it is what are the different rights against the principal debtor now imagine the same situation once the debt has been paid by the surety the surety becomes the creditor for the debtor so all the rights of creditor will be transferred to surety against the principal debtor so first one it is right of subrogation again the subrogation comes the surety is sub subrogated to all rights which the creditor had against the principal debtor when the surety has paid the guaranteed debt on the default of the principal debtor the surety steps into the shoes of the creditor and will be liable to exercise against the principal debtor all these rights and remedies which could be exercised by the creditor everything 
which creditor was having as a right against the principal debtor now surety will have because now surety has settled the debt to the creditor and he has become a new creditor right to indemnity according to section 145 in every contract of guarantee there is an implied promise by the principal debtor to indemnify the surety and the surety is entitled to recover from the principal debtor whatever the sum he has rightfully paid under the guarantee but no sum which he has paid wrongfully the right occurs only on payment of all that the surety is liable under the guarantee or other things are not countable whatever is there only that would be indemnified right the following two points must also be noted in connection with this right to indemnity what is these what are these points point number one the surety cannot claim more than what he has actually paid to the creditor we know this thing you can never recover what you haven't paid you can always claim only what you have paid thus if the discharge thus if he discharges his debt by compromise at less than its full amount then he will get only the actual amount not the full amount he can get from the principal debtor only the amount actually paid and point number two says actual payment either in cash or by transfer of property is essential for asking the principal debtor to pay a promissory note given by the surety will not be sufficient to claim indemnity why so because in promissory note you are just promising to pay you are not paying so that we will not count we will count only what you have actually paid either by cash or by transfer of property whatever is cash means bank whatever actual payment has been made if you are giving some kind of document some kind of promise you are making that will not be counted that is what we are trying to say right so that is there in case of indemnity i can recover only what i have actually paid not more than that both these points are trying to say the same only and adding to the right to indemnity right to be relieved from liability again simple the surety can ask the principal debtor to pay off his debts himself and relieve the surety from the liability thus the surety can ask even before making any payment to the creditor however he can do so only after the debt has become due so i if i have given any guarantee i can always ask to get out of that guarantee i can always ask to get relieved from my duty simple now what are the different rights against co-sureties if there are co-sureties if there are more than one surety in a contract what are the rights of a surety against the other sureties so when a debt is guaranteed by two or more sureties they are called co-sureties in such a case all the co-sureties are liable towards the payment of the guaranteed debt as per the agreement among them right now once they have paid what are the rights among themselves first it is right to contribution according to section 146 where two or more persons are co-sureties for the same debt or duty either jointly or severally and whatever under the same or different contracts and whether with or without the knowledge of each other the co-sureties in the absence of any contract to the contrary all liable as between themselves to pay each an equal share of the whole debt or of that part of it which remains unpaid by the principal today now it is very simple if there are more than one surety all are supposed to contribute equally but they can decide this ratio among themselves by entering a contract but if there is no contract then they will have to pay equally they have they will have to contribute equally that is what we are trying to say bound in different terms according to section 147 co-sureties who are bound in different sums are liable to pay equally as far as the limits of their respective obligations permit therefore the liability upon appointed equally will be subject to the maximum each one has guaranteed now if they have given certain guarantee that will also act accordingly other than the point of equal payment other than the point of equal cons contribution right that is also there next now what we are trying to say surety has certain rights against the debtor against the creditor against co-sureties as well but whenever there is a right there is always going to be a burden and that burden we call it as a liability so what are the different liabilities of a surety that also we need to understand so number one surety's liability is co-extensive the liability of surety is co-extensive which means that the surety is liable to the same extent to which the principal debtor is liable it, uh, there is no different bet difference between principal data and uh, surety when surety gives a guarantee whatever principal data was liable to surety also gets liable to surety's liability may also be limited Wha how the surety may be special guarantee uh, uh, the surety may be special ga uh, agreement limit his liability to a fixed amount in such cases the surety's liability will not be more than the amount fixed by him 
now special agreement but required without that special agreement you cannot fix it right that is what we are trying to say with this surety's liability arises immediately on default of principal debtor that is also simple the surety becomes liable to pay amount of guarantee as soon as the default is committed by the principal debtor on default of the principal debtor the surety cannot ask the creditor to exhaust all the remedies open to him against the principal debtor before proceeding against the surety he may use he may sue the surety without say uh, suing the principal debtor moreover he may also sue them jointly again whatever the liability was there automatically it is immediately going to arise for the surety if the principal debtor is on default just after that surety is liability where the original contract between creditor and principal debtor is void or voidable now what how what happens in that scenario the contract between the surety and the creditor is an independent contract and if it is an independent contract it does not matter where the other contract was void or voidable because going giving a guarantee is illegal and that ca contract is very much valid it does not depend upon the other contract because it is an independent contract and not a col collateral one if it was a collateral then it was dependent on the other contract and it would have impact depending upon what your other contract is but here the guarantee is an independent contract so thus it cannot be said that the surety will be liable only if the principal debtor is liable therefore when the original contract between the principal debtor and creditor is void the surety will remain liable when the original contract is voidable at the option of the principal debtor who has expressed his opinion and revoked the contract the surety may not be discharged from his liability moreover the surety is also not discharged when the creditor fails to sue the principal debtor within the period is otherwise uh, available against the surety so surety surety is not getting any remedy from anything now if there is a liability there should be a way to get out of that liability so when a surety gets out of all those liability how does it gets discharged from his liability let's try to understand first notice or a notice of revocation now what is a revocation revocation means going out of it so a guarantee may be specific or continuing guarantee a specific guarantee once given is irrevocable right section 130 of the indian contract act provides that a continuing guarantee may at any time be revoked by the surety as the future transactions by notice to the creditor however surety remains liable for transactions entered into the prior of the notice so if i want to get out of the uh, continuing guarantee if it is a specific guarantee it is irrevocable it was specific to that particular transaction but if i am giving guarantee for certain transactions that are going to happen in future so i need to give a notice to the creditor that i will not be responsible for any future transactions previous one i cannot get out that i am all, always going to be responsible that i always i am going to be liable for but for future i can get out by giving a notice right death of surety of course if i die of course i, I will be out of any guarantee i cannot give any guarantee i will be discharged from any future guarantee section 131 of the act provides that the death of the surety operates in the absence of any contrary as a revocation of continuing guarantee as far as regard to future transactions the deceased surety's estate will not be liable for any transaction into after the death even if the creditor has no notice of the death it does not mean if somebody is not there it's not there whether the notice is given or not that is a secondary thing and if somebody is dead how can he give notice also right so that is why death does not um, you know uh, require any kind of notice because that itself a big event next is novation novation means the substitution of a new contract either between the same parties or parties for the old one thus the revocation of a contract of guarantee discharges it simple if i'm substituting a new contract instead of the old contract definitely it is going to discharge me from the other contract variance in terms of contract if something is being changed without my consent again that will also change my liability so according to section 133 of the act any variance made without surety's consent in the terms of the contract between principal debtor and the creditor discharges the surety as to transaction subsequent to the variance before that variance maybe things will be okay but once the variance or the variance is there i am not responsible without my notice if you are making any changes to next release or discharge of the principal debtor if the principal debtor is discharged surety will also be discharged according to section 134 the surety is discharged by any contract between the creditor and the principal debtor by which the principal debtor is released or by any act or omission of the 
creditor and legal consequences of which the discharge of the principal debtor so if principal debtor is discharged surety also is discharged from his liability next arrangement of uh, arrangement by creditor with principal debtor contract between the creditor and the principal debtor by which the creditor makes a composition with or promises to give time to or not to sue the principal debtor discharges the surety unless the surety asserts to such contract in terms of the section uh, this section the surety is discharged if the creditor makes a contract with principal debtor right the, uh, of uh, creditor can always say that i don't want this guarantee any contract like any type of, of contract can be there to remove uh, to discharge or to remove surety from his liability that is there gives time to him right promises not to sue the principal debtor without the consent of the surety in a, any of these cases surety will be discharged in the following cases surety is not discharged so what happens when a contract to give time to the principal debtor made by the creditor with a third person and not with the principal debtor then the surety is not discharged if that is with somebody else it is a different story when mere forbiddance on the part of the creditor to sue the principal debtor or to enforce any other remedy against him does not in absence of any provision in the guarantee to the contrary discharges the surety and third one where there are co-sureties a release by the creditor one of them does not discharge the others neither does it free the surety released from the from his responsibility to the other sureties so if one is released only one is released not the others right next imparting sureties remedy now what does it mean uh, sorry impairing sureties remedy if the creditor does any act which is inconsistent with the of the surety or omits to do any act which his duty to the surety requires him to do and the eventual remedy of the surety himself against the principal debtor is thereby impaired the surety is discharged whatever remedy a surety has had if it is being impaired definitely surety is discharged because of the creditor creditor should not harm the surety's remedy should not create any problem for surety if he is creating any problem that will be a problem for him because surety will get discharged loss of security so section 141 provides a surety is entitled to the benefit of every security which the creditor has against the principal debtor at, at the time when the contract of surety uh, uh, contract of surety ship is entered into whether the surety knows of the existence of such security or not and if the creditor loss loses or without the consent of the surety parts with such security the surety is discharged to the extent of the value of the security the word loss here means loss because of carelessness or negligence so if there was a security given to, to the creditor and there is any kind of loss from the creditor then i am discharged as surety from my liability to that extent because if i'm paying you something i can always recover my um, uh, money by selling off that security but now you have lost it so now it's not my responsibility it's you who has lost so i am also getting discharged from my responsibility as a surety to that extent right next misrepresentation according to section 142 any guarantee which has been obtained by means of misrepresentation made by the creator or with his knowledge and assent concerning a material uh, concerning a material fact or part of the transaction is invalid this we always know we already know right now concealment now again misrepresenting is something deliberately but concealment is something hiding not instead of misrepresenting but just concealing certain things just hiding something any guarantee which the creditor has obtained by means of keeping silence to material circumstances is also invalid right next it is failure of co surety to join when a person gives a guarantee upon a contract that the creditor shall not act upon it until another person has joined in it as co surety the guarantee is not valid if that other person does not join so if there were co sureties it was given that you know it a creditor should not do anything until there are two sureties and there is no other surety then automatically he is discharged and last but not the least lack of essential elements a contract of guarantee must have all the essential elements of a contract if it lacks any of the essential the contract becomes void and the surety is discharged simple enough i believe this is all about rights and liabilities of a surety in a contract of guarantee